incarnation. The Varaha, or Boar incarnation, occurred many millions or even billions of years ago at the beginning of the universe. In the beginning of the universe, there was a great demon called Hiranyaksha. And Hiranyaksha threw the earth down into the Garbhadaka ocean at the bottom of the universe. I guess he was having a bad day too. <laughs> anyway, he, he did this uh, just because that's the kind of things that demons do, you know, they like to mess things up. So uh, the demigods didn't know what to do. Hiranyaksha was very powerful and they couldn't stop him. So they had to call on Lord Vishnu for help. So Lord Vishnu appeared in the form of a boar. He, he appeared out of Lord Brahma's left nostril uh, as a tiny insect. And then this insect gradually increased and increased in size until it was this enormous boar. And why a boar? Because if you know anything about wild boars or wild pigs, they like to root around in the, in the mud and find, you know, stuff to eat that way. So Lord Boar went down, jumped into the Garbhadaka ocean, and then picked up the earth from the mud at the bottom of the Garbhadaka and put the earth back in her regular position in the universe. Then he had to fight with Hiranyaksha because Hiranyaksha didn't like him uh, to do this. And of course he killed Hiranyaksha after a long battle taking millions of years of earth time, but just a few moments in the time of the uh, heavenly kingdoms, heavenly planets, and the uh, planets of the sages and so on. So this battle raged on for a long time, and there, there was times when uh, Hiranyaksha appeared to be winning, and then there were times when Lord Bor was winning, and the demigods were cheering him on, come on, Lord Bor, you know, sock it to him. And so finally Lord Bor with his club, he smashed Hiranyaksha, you know, wham, home run, right out of uh, his body. So uh, Hiranyaksha was killed, and this was the beginning of the enmity between um, the families of the demons and the demigods. I mean, they were already at, at odds and they were fighting one another, but this was really the beginning of the conflict. And Hiranyaksha's brother was none other than Hiranyakashipu, yes, another famous demon who um, attracted, actually, uh, the incarnation of Vishnu as Nrishinghadev. So today we uh, celebrate the incarnation. He's, Lord Bor of Rahadev is considered the first incarnation of Vishnu or the first pastime incarnation. Uh, the uh, Purusha incarnations are students. Uh, no, 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 no. Garbhadakshai Vishnu, Kshiradakshai Vishnu, and Karanadakshai Vishnu. Karana in the causal osha or Mahavishnu, right? And then the pastime incarnations begin with va uh, Varaha. Vamana comes much later in another, another uh, Manu. So all these incarnations appear at specific times in the universe, and Lord Brahma knows exactly when they're going to appear. Lord, because Krishna actually appears to Lord Brahma in the beginning of the universe, and he advises him. He tells him about all his incarnations and when they're going to appear. So uh, the Lord Brahma knows the schedule and he also knows what their activities will be, what their pastimes will be. So there are the Purusha incarnations, there are the pastime incarnations, and then there are the Yuga avatars, right? Krishna says, yada yadahi dharmasya glanir bhavati bharata. I appear in every yuga. Yuge, yuge. Uh, every yuga, I appear to give religious principles uh, for the benefit of all living entities. So the Lord appears in every yuga as a past, not as a past, sometimes they're combined. Like in Krishna and Lord Chaitanya's case, 
they are combined pastime uh, incarnations and yuga avatars. Uh, but more often they're separate. For example, in the Satya Yuga, the Nara, Narayan, Rishis are the Yuga avatars. Uh, but the pastime incarnations are different. So then we have all these incarnations, like thousands and thousands and millions of incarnations, expansions and forms of the Lord appearing in this material world. Why? Not to maintain the universe. The demigods already do that. Uh, Vishnu creates the universe. The demigods like Lord Brahma, they manage all the universal affairs. Uh, he delegates all that authority to the demigods. But then he appears just to save the living entities from material existence. Uh, that's his special role. So the Lord is so merciful. He's so kind that when, when everything else fails, he's there to save us. Uh, so that's the role of the Lord in the material universe and actually in the life of every living entity. And we should understand that we, we have no better friend than the Lord. Uh, he's always there. He's the last resort. And when things get really desperate, if we take shelter of him, we'll be saved. Uh, so just like the earth planet, when she was thrown into the ocean, uh, she went to Lord Brahma, and then Lord Brahma went to the Lord and begged for his intervention. And he certainly came and made everything right. So we can also do that. When we're thrown into despair, or when we're confused, or attacked, or something like that, we can always take shelter of the Lord, and he will always respond if we're sincere. That's the criterion. We have to be sincere. Uh, just like there was one devotee who uh, made all kinds of promises. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to bring all these friends of mine to your workshop in San Diego, oh, I'm going to do this, and then he even took a, a devotional name, and, and he was so enthusiastic and all this stuff, and then what happened? Nothing. <laughs> he didn't make good on any of his promises. It made him look like a fool, you know? And we even have some uh, devotees who took initiation from us, and then they, they agreed to do certain uh, services, and then they didn't do it. And this makes them look like fools. Huh? That makes them look like they're not sincere, and they're not sincere. Well, yeah, they're servants of Maya. Maya means illusion. Maya means false promises. Uh, just like when the politicians, uh, you know, there, there's a big political race right now in the U.S., and the politicians are making all kinds of promises. Oh, yeah, we're going to reform the government. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. Improve the economy, blah, 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 blah. Right? And everybody knows that most of these promises are false. Huh? But still, the game goes on anyway. Why? Because this material world is a world of false promises. Huh? Promise her anything, but give her our pege. Remember that commercial? Huh? Maybe it was only in the U.S. But anyway, that's the, the cynical uh, viewpoint of the materialists is, I'll say anything to get what I want. But then I don't care. I'm not going to have to uh, actually do what I said I was going to do. I'm just going to say whatever I need to say to get whatever I want. And that's it. Uh, we see this all the time. So in material life, we're constantly experiencing false promises. Uh, but a devotee is not like this. A devotee values his word of honor, first of all. If he says, I'm going to do this, I'm going to go here, I'm going to show up there, I'm going to do that, then he better do it, because the first qualification of a transcendentalist is that he says what he's going to do, and he does what he says he's going to do. His word of honor is good. It's as good as gold. Huh? If he says, I'm going to be your disciple, I'm going to follow these rules and regulations, I'm going to do service, I'm going to remain loyal to the Sampradaya and all that, 
He has to do that. And if he doesn't do it, it means that he's not sincere and he's just a fool. He's a rascal, actually. Rascal means someone who makes false promises. Huh? We, we know there's, there's such a thing as a sincere rascal. <laughs> huh? we, we've experienced this, huh? Uh, where we'll say to them, you know, you really should follow this spiritual process and chant and so on. And, and they frankly say, no, I can't do it. I can't stop eating meat. I can't stop illicit sex life. You know, uh, I just can't do it. You know, that's a sincere rascal. And we prefer a sincere <laughs> rascal rather than an insincere so-called devotee. Huh? Someone who says, oh, yes, I'm your disciple. I'll do whatever you say. You're my spiritual master. Isn't this great? Oh, yeah, this is wonderful. And then what happens? They go away. They don't show 